I hope everybody is having fun and living a nice, lovely day today. As many people have noticed, um, I'm taking quite a bit of long breaks between, but it's just because I'm busy doing something and once that is done, I will be back to having a lot of recordings, daily recordings, even whenever possible. But well, you know, somehow the subscriber count keeps going up. So I guess people are watching the older episodes, which is good for me. Anyway, here we are. Please like, comment, anything to make the channel grow. It would be nice if my wisdom, oh God, I think I'm this intelligent. Anyway, so I am going to do a video about um something that uh, has been uh, bothering me well today is financial tuesday and i just want to talk about uh one of um the young influencers that i kind of was following and then i kind of lost track because well i don't know i'm, I'm just like that I, I i get obsessed with something after for a short time and then i leave it my son had a cold and i think i think he kind of handed it over to loving mommy so maybe I probably have it. So if my voice sounds weird, it sounds weird to my ear. But then again, when I watch my videos, I'm always like this. Do I sound like that? I hate my voice, honestly. <laughs> I, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, the funny thing is my daughter has the same thing. She keeps, every time she I record her or I do something, and then she's like, but mommy, why is your phone weird? I'm like, why won't you be my phone? She's like, I don't sound like that. You must, you must do something. You're putting some effects on your phone. She's just not. It's true. Our voices do sound different in our ears to ourselves. I wonder if there is a scientific reason for that. Anyway. Here we go. So I want to talk about one of the influences. That was a very long intro. Still, I'm still going long on the intro but calling it a long intro anyway so we people have been talking about this influence um okay wow um i think she is an amazing dancer i absolutely loved her when i was when she was pregnant that's when i discovered her on tiktok and then i followed her on facebook and then you know but i absolutely love her i think her energy levels are great she is an amazing human being and um yeah so after a while i lost interest but then i went back when she was giving birth and um then two days after she gave birth i was kind of hoping she would be on maternity leave but then she wasn't so <laughs> so i watched her a bit and then well um so i took a break but then, of course, my break lasted like two days because then her husband comes out claiming he has a divorce. So basically, she is a Nigerian um, and uh, she's going through some family dramas. She's uh, married to a Canadian. They live in the U.S. They apparently met online. I don't remember if it was Tinder or something else. And uh, she is a dancer, an amazing dancer. And um, she dances very provocatively. I wish I could dance like that. And uh, she makes, that's how she makes her, her living online. And well, I think she has some videos and she has, she's, I think she's a trained dancer, something like that. Anyway, so uh, they got married and uh, she's been making her living with the social uh, media, um presence and uh she gets lots of gifts she really gets lots of gifts she gives this address and people send gifts and yeah so she had a live bath and stuff like that and yeah so i would say her audience is mostly africans um not just nigerians but uh, mostly africans um and uh i think for me i think the funny thing was i was like her audience are mostly africans and she is doing the exact opposite of every single thing that an african woman is told not to do when she's pregnant and all you know there are all these comments about are you trying to get rid of that child are you trying to have a miscarriage why are you naked what you know you're a mother you need to stop being naked online you know there are all these comments and she just kept going i mean like the comments brought in the money um so she uh well then her husband uh, went online said that their relationship was over and uh, he wants a divorce because he just can't 
um, continue with the marriage anymore. And for his mental health, he's decided he wants to live. So today, I actually, uh, so then after that, she had a response, which is why I'm making this video. Her response was that, uh, oh no, so, well, you know, she said she doesn't want to give her side of the story. She doesn't want to talk about it. She will continue with her life. I mean, it did not stop her from going online. And she kept saying that those people who are telling her to get offline, are they going to feed her children? Are they going to feed her children? Because her being online is how she makes her living. And that is what this video is about. I don't care about her dramas. I don't care about her family um, issues. I'm genuinely hoping that it's just clout because her husband is a chiropractor. And I think until now, he was the side person, right? And when he started doing these videos, he's gotten quite a lot of followers and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm deep down. I know it's a stupid thing to hope, but deep down, I kind of hope that it's just that they're just doing this for clout. However, if they're not doing it for clout, I feel sorry for them. I mean, it would be, I, I, I genuinely do want families together. So this video is about diversifying your, um, your sources of income. So there are sources of income which come with a flood. And I was talking to a friend of mine and I said that, you know, I have never watched one full episode of Keeping Up With The Kardashians. But one thing I admire about those women, they have their fingers, toes, nails in everything. You know, you might love them, criticize them, hate them, whatever, but their mother really did put her fingers and hands on everything so if one stream dries up the other one comes up you know you can still tap into the other one and i don't know if um cora's um income is just one okay of course there are people also who are saying come on the man is he's a doctor he didn't just walk out and well, i mean you can get child support what kind of a life is this that you want that you did not even have savings that can make you go off social media for a few days Thing is, people don't understand how expensive it is to look expensive. She has to keep up appearances. She has to look nice. I remember watching a video which talked about how um, the real housewives of all these places, many of them go into debt because of the shows. That's why they have to do other things to make sure that they make money because you have to dress a certain way. You cannot repeat clothes. You have to wear all these designer clothes. And until you have a really good storyline, the designers are not even giving you credit. They are, you know, you have to physically buy those clothes. You have to show that you're rich for you to be treated as a rich person. Looking at that and putting it in context of Cora, her husband might be a doctor, chiropractor, whatever he is, but she also comes in with her talent and she has to have a certain level of, she has to maintain that talent to a certain, um, to a certain level. Um, I don't know if you understand me. I wonder, am I making sense? Yeah. She kind of has to um, maintain it to a certain level. So sometimes looking expensive can be very, very expensive. And I just wish, I don't know where um, her family is or if her family are on the background talking to her and stuff like that. But I just wish that when somebody comes into money when they are young, because I'm sure she's making good money. When somebody comes into money when they are young, because she became famous at 20, 21, 22, around there, very early 20s, because she got married at 22, she was already famous by the time she was getting married. And if you come into money when you're that young, it doesn't, you need kind of some people around you who will guide you in telling you, listen, this does not last forever. You need to be able to take a break 
whatever work it is you're doing, I think this is part of the amazing part about being self-employed for those who are self-employed. You need to be able to take a vacation. You need to be able to, t to have enough money that if I go away for a month, I'm not going to lose everything. And I think that is where it saddens me, actually. It saddens me that people don't understand that um, that maybe she just can't afford to take a break. However, the other thing can be she can afford to take a break, which I really hope is the case. She can afford to take a break, but this is how she's keeping her sanity because, you know, everybody deals with things the way they want to deal with it. When I was pregnant, for example, I remember people kept telling me, get off Facebook because I was talking about complaining about my pregnancy and, you know, and, you know, just basically things. And I remember a very well-meaning relative told me that, you know, it's just too much. You're exposing too much. But what I did not tell her, which is what was going on, was every single time I went to the doctor, they had some bad news to tell me. And every single time it was, oh, Marcy, your eyesight is going too fast. We are afraid you might end up being semi-blind by the time you give birth. This is really going bad. There's nothing we can do about this. The baby is not doing well. You know, every single time there was some bad news on top of bad news. And my way of coping with all this was to talk about the good news because I didn't want to talk about the bad news. So I, I had to keep, there had to be a place where I'm happy, where everything is fine. And that place where everything is fine, I chose for it to be on Facebook. And I was they are saying all these things and you know typing and making comments and just basically being the old me the worry free me and i hope that is what is happening with cora i would not want it to be that somebody who has worked as hard as she's worked because honestly i mean people think that it's easy i don't think it's easy for her you know, just taking your child, you've just had a baby, waking up the next morning. Granted, I wouldn't do that. But then again, I'm 40, she's 27. I wouldn't give birth today and the next day I'm in my underwear dancing on TikTok. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't uh, put my child on the chair and be dancing there and commanding my husband to bring me a jacket. I just wouldn't do that because I'm 40, <laughs> she's 27, she is a different generation, you know, and I just think that sometimes we, we, we kind of don't put things in context, because honestly, whatever, whatever she's doing, she is also young, she's actually quite young, and she's been in the spotlight for a very long time for such a young person, it feels, you know, so I just feel this is a woman who's worked hard, who's put her whole life and people decided, she did not tell anybody to make her marriage their goals, but people decided to put their marriage as her goal, uh, their mar her marriage as their goals. And she has sponsors and these sponsors expect certain things from her. People send her gifts and they expect these gifts to be advertised. People, if people, if she doesn't advertise these gifts, then all of a sudden you're going to hear Cora is uh, taking gifts and not advertising them. She's breaching contracts. Um, she had to do a certain level of stuff to be done. And I think her energy and her amazing, and you know, that is what sells for her. She is the African woman who has given birth and is not sitting there drinking soup all day. She is dancing. That is what the sponsors and the uh, business people are looking at. And that is what is selling. So she has to maintain that. Otherwise, she loses her sponsors, which means she loses whatever it is that she is making. And as much as I don't agree with it, I understand it. I understand the need for a mother to make a living. I remember when my daughter was um, was young and uh, when I decided that I didn't want to be helped by the government at some point, I took the weird decision of actually working um, 
uh, cleaning jobs and I remember someone telling me, yeah, but you have options. But sometimes what other people consider options for me, I needed to be working hard so that I feel like I have value. Maybe Cora doesn't want to depend on child support. Maybe she doesn't want to feel like she has lost everything. Maybe she doesn't need all that. Or maybe it's actually true that she needs the money and she is working for the money. As I said at the beginning, when I started, I genuinely hope, really, really hope that this is just for clout and she and her husband are going to work things out and then we are going to look stupid. But if it's not, I feel really bad for her and I feel really sorry for her and I wish somebody and I hope this opens her up to learning about diversifying <coughs> her investments. I mean, she has a book. A book will still bring in money, but of course, if you're not doing publicity for it, then nobody's buying it. So um, she kind of still has to be a little bit in the limelight. But I don't know. I just, I think it's one of those things that you don't really have an answer. But, well, we will talk. Okay, people. So that's it. So I guess my advice for this Tuesday is just diversify. Diversify your investments, especially when you're self-employed, so that if one stream dries up, the other one can still be tapped into.